encouraging me to just, you know what, have faith, keep believing. And now I feel like I'm in a position to tell you guys the same thing, is a lot of times when you have your dreams and they seem out of reach and they seem like they'll never happen and you just get down and you get out and you give up. But I'm here to tell you that never, ever give up. I think a lot of the times that I see people and they are so happy for me is because a lot of you guys are in the same position. It may not be because you want a family. It may not be because you want a child. It may be because you want a business of your own. It may be because you're dreaming of owning your own home. It may be that you want to be in a better financial position. But we all have dreams, right? So it doesn't matter necessarily what category they fall in, but we all have dreams. And a lot of times this world can beat you down, right? You can feel like, oh, I just give up, just drop the mic. <laughs> and you just exit stage left. <laughs> but you cannot exit stage left. You have to keep going. And one of the reasons why I feel, um, well, let me tell you a little bit about my journey. Um, for those of you who know me or those of you who don't, I started off, you know, I was a little girl in Detroit, Michigan. Um, my parents were very, very young when they had me. They were like 16 and 17 years old. So they were children themselves. And being a 47 year old who had a baby, I cannot imagine a 16 year old having a child. I mean, the things that a child needs not just to talk about the, the monetary aspect of it, you know, the diapers, how much they cost, and the food. Sometimes I go shopping for her, it costs more for her food and her baby outfits than I spend on myself. I'm like, $32 for a dress? I'm putting that back. Let me go to Kmart or Target. I'm frugal, I don't, you know, I, I watch my little coins. Honey, that's why I keep them in the bag because I watch them. <laughs> this dress came from Zara. No, it's not Gucci. Okay, <laughs> less than $40. All right, but well, anyway. <laughs> um, so, you know, sometimes things can seem very overwhelming. And I look at, at my life as a mom and what my parents' life may have been like, and it's like I can't even fathom the, the fact that they had a child at such a young age. But as a result of that, 
my mother did not want to raise me, and so she made the decision to give me up for adoption. But my grandmother, my, my dad's mom, stepped in and said, you know what, don't give her up for adoption, I'll take her, please give her to me. And it was the best life I could have ever had with someone that I knew who loved me, who cared about me, um, and who wanted me. A lot of times it's very important just to be wanted, just to know that you were needed, you were wanted to be, you know, in this world. Um, Unfortunately, my, my mother wasn't the kindest person as a result of whatever happened to her. I don't know her whole story. But I suffered a lot of abuse um, at the hands of my mom. Wow. Even to the point where when I did start to thrive as a young girl, I started modeling, I started doing um, pageants, and it was just for fun. I was like 14 years old and I went and joined my first pageant. I think it was called Little Miss Detroit. And my grandmother used to take me to dance classes. They were free dance classes. We didn't have a lot of money. So we would go to the community center and she would put me in dance classes and anything that she knew that we liked that would cost you know very little money. And it happened to be something that I really loved. I really loved dancing. I, I loved to play the violin. And so I became, became to be, uh, I grew to be very much in love of the arts. But when I won my first pageant, I think I was um, 15 or 16 years old, and my mother, <laughs> I don't think I've ever told anyone this story, honestly. I know it's in my book, but I haven't published it yet. But I got a call from the director of that pageant. The director is the person who puts it all on, who owns the pageant. And she said she got a phone call from a woman who was saying that she was my mother and that she was telling her, I was 16 now, 15 or 16, I can't remember the, I think I was 15. And this woman was telling her all the reasons why I shouldn't be her beauty queen that I shouldn't have that crown and why she should take it from me. And I'm thinking, no, that couldn't be true. That's not, that, that's not true. I didn't believe it. So then she, taught, she sent me the letter. My mother actually sent her a letter after they had a conversation that talked about all the reasons why she felt like I should have my crown taken away from me. Now I'm a 15 year old girl. I'm out here trying to just be, just live and just figure out who I want to be and live my dreams and do something that was fun. And in fact, pageants are, a lot of people don't know, the number one source of scholarships for women for colleges. So it paid for my college education, but that's on another level. But this woman who gave birth to me at 16 or 17 years old literally called this, this pageant director up and told her, take that crown away from her. She doesn't deserve it. This is a woman who doesn't even speak to me. <laughs> Whenever I would go to visit my mom, uh, mother, my, my mom's mother, my grandmother, years later, this is a woman when I stood in the room, she literally pretended that I was not in the room. She could stand there and talk to everyone else, her sisters, her father, her mother, her nephews, her nieces, but her own child, she would pretend that I was not even in the room. And so as a mother today, as a mother, Today, and when I look at my little girl, I cannot imagine somebody treating her like that and to be her own mother, to do it. I like it. So what I'm saying to you is, the point of what I'm trying to say is, is that even if it's somebody in your own family that's telling you you are not good enough, that you are not worthy. There's a higher power than that and that's God. Because God wanted me 
to succeed and God wanted me to grow and to eventually in his time and in his speed have my own family, the one that I've always prayed for, the one that I, I always dreamed for and I'll be damned if I ever let anybody harm my baby, ever. So know that.